Today we're going to answer the question, how did Jesus die if God can't die? It's an interesting question and I understand why people are asking it because look at the technicality here. So if Jesus is God and Jesus died on the cross, are we saying that God can die? Well, sometimes people ask this to put Christians uh, up against a wall and try to trap them into saying a heresy which is that the divine can perish or die, which is not true. I mean, that's blasphemy. I mean, no Christian believes that God in essence can die because by definition, God is imperishable. God is immortal. He's eternal. He, he cannot die. So understanding that, then how can we say that Jesus died? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because the Bible explains to us what's called the hypostatic union of Jesus. First, let me show you a passage. It says in Colossians 2, 9, it says, For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. So that means that the fullness of deity means that, that Jesus is fully divine. He's fully God, and yet he dwells in a bodily form. This hypostatic union shows us and tells us that we don't have two Jesuses. What we have is one Jesus, but he has two natures. There's a divine component to him, and there is a human component to him. This is why we say that Jesus is the God-man. He is fully God, and he is fully human. When you understand this, you understand that when God came in the flesh, when he was incarnate, the Bible says that it was then that he could feel pain, he could be exhausted, he hungered, he could feel human emotions, and he was tempted in every way like a human is tempted. So because of that dual nature of Christ, we can't say that the divine felt pain or that the divine component of him, you know, died on the cross, but it is the human component of him that died on the cross. Now, when you understand this, it is not a heresy to say that Jesus died. Well, we can also understand this in terms of just how we explain death, right? When, when someone dies, we don't tell them, oh, they didn't actually die because, um, you know, although their body died, um, their spirit is still carrying on. Because we, we, we believe that, right? Like we believe that um, when a person dies, their body dies, but yet their spirit either goes to one of two places, heaven or hell. Now, because of that, we don't say, oh, they didn't actually die. No, they did die. That means that they, as a person, they went to the other side of eternity. And that's what death really is. So the person of Jesus actually died. It was the person, the body of Jesus that felt the pain, that felt the whips and also suffered and also died. But the divine was untouched in the sense that you can't touch the divine. His divine essence continued and it moved on to the other side of eternity. Now, I can already hear the counter arguments. Well, okay, then if if the divine did not die, then how is it that his sacrifice is still sufficient? to pay for for all the sins of man. Well, I'll tell you, the Bible actually explains that to us. And it explains this to us by explaining how sin entered the world. How did sin enter the world? It entered the world through one man called Adam. See, when Adam sinned, all of humanity had to pay the price. All of humanity is now born in a fallen or sinful nature. And the Apostle Paul says, look, because of one man, Adam, sin entered into the world. Also, there was a second Adam, which his name is Jesus. And this second Adam came to redeem us, justify us. This second Adam was a life-giving spirit. He came to give all of us humanity and undo what the first Adam did. So see, there's no problem theologically for a Christian to understand this. But also, why then, then why did God need to come to the earth in the first place? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because only God could have lived the life that man could not live. See, the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. And the Bible also tells us that we all fall short of the glory of God. Not one of us is perfect. Not one of us is sinless. So for that reason, God could not look throughout the world and throughout all the thousands of years of humanity's existence. He could not find one perfect sinless person 
to bear the sins of all people, right? Because we all fall short of the glory of God. And so God couldn't command that out of one person and say, hey, you be sinless, live your life perfectly, and then your sacrifice or your death will pay the penalty of everyone's sin. He could not find that because not one of us is good, not one of us is sinless. In fact, Jesus says uh, that, that even if you lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery, right? So the standard, the standard of perfection is super high. And because of that, it needed to be God himself to come incarnate, to come in the flesh, to live the life that no human could so that he would be an unblemished lamb, the perfect lamb. And only that unblemished lamb could be sacrificed and atone for the sins of humanity. So essentially what God did is that he couldn't find a perfect human being. So he became the perfect human being to redeem us all. He didn't have to. He could have left us in our sin. He could have left us just paying the wages of sin, which is death, but he chose not to. He, this is called the grace of God. And this is why we celebrate and love God so much, why we live for God. And we're so grateful for what he's done for us because of the fact that he didn't have to, but yet he did. He came in the form of flesh and then he suffered and died on the cross for you and I to then be saved. So there's no contradiction here. There is no heresy being said. In fact, most Christians, if not all Christians, agree on the hypostatic union of Christ. And because of that, we understand that the human component of Jesus was the one that suffered and died, and yet his divine nature was left untouched. 